Judiciary Committee. I'm both honored and dismayed to be back in front of you again. Some of you may remember that I was with you just this past September discussing the importance of diversity in American media. You may recall uh, that the reason I was moved to speak then was because the House had just recently passed H.R. 908, condemning all forms of anti-hate Asian sentiment. But I was disheartened to find that for a bill that required no money or resources, just a simple condemnation of acts of hate against people of Asian descent, 164 members of Congress, all Republican, voted against it. And now here I am again, because as every witness in this hearing has pointed out, the situation has gotten worse, much worse. Vicha Ratanapakti murdered. Pak Ho murdered. Noel Quintana face slashed with a blade from ear to ear. An 89-year-old woman set on fire. Tadataka Ono, a professional jazz pianist beaten so badly he can no longer play piano. And now seven Asian people shot dead in Georgia two days ago, six of whom were women. These are only a few of the 3,800 reported incidents since last March. I was speaking to a pollster during the recent elections, and I asked him why, when I see polling results broken down by race, do I so rarely see Asian Americans as a separate category? He heard my question, he looked me dead in the eye, and he said, because Asian Americans are considered statistically insignificant. Statistically insignificant. Now, all of you listening to me here by virtue of your own elections are more familiar with the intricacies of polling than I am. So undoubtedly, you already know what this means. Statistically insignificant literally means we don't matter. We as Asian Americans have come to this country because we believe in the American dream. Many of us have succeeded, and some of us are even the frontline healthcare workers upon whom we've all come to depend during this terrible pandemic. But many of us are struggling too. In fact, the wealth disparity between the richest Asian Americans and the poorest is the largest of any ethnic group in America. In New York, Asian Americans have a higher poverty rate than any other minority group, where fully one in four are living below the poverty line. And poverty rates among Asian American seniors are much higher than the national average. That's something to consider as we watch the most vulnerable in our community get taunted, pushed, slashed, and murdered. Despite this wide disparity of experiences, we continue to be tagged the model minority. We simply cannot continue to live with the myth that the most successful of us represent the totality of us. So we know the hurdles we face. The question for us here is what can we do about them? One of the places that starts is with education. Let's teach them everything that Professor Lee so eloquently highlighted for us, including celebrating the fact that the most decorated combat unit in US military history was the 442nd Combat Team, a unit in World War II made up entirely of Asian Americans. Now, these are not moments in Asian American history. This is American history. When we are erased from our history books, we are made invisible. And the result, to quote Congresswoman Meng, is that we are perpetually made to feel like foreigners in our own country. Include our stories because they matter. We must also empower our local community organizers by directing funds to areas that have been historically impoverished, not just for the benefit of the AAPI community, but for the, for the benefit of all communities living there, most of whom are non-white. It's no wonder that there's historically been tension among racial groups when the thing they have most in common is poverty and lack of access to services. And there happen to be two pieces of legislation before this committee as we speak that deal with these specific issues. One is the No Hate Bill. It provides necessary grants and money to community organizations, counseling for those convicted of hate crimes, and improved data collection for hate crime reporting, among other important services. The committee also has before it, right now, the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act introduced by Congresswoman Mang and Senator Hirono. It's crucial that we have reliable reporting for these hate crimes and an infrastructure that makes it easy for people for whom English is not their primary language. Chairman Nadler, you have been an ally to the AAPI community in the past. I respectfully urge you not to let these bills languish in committee, but see them through so that they can be passed by the full House and then on to the Senate. Now, I'm not naive enough to think that I'm going to convince all of you to stand up for us. Trust me, I've seen your voting records. But I am speaking to those to whom humanity still matters. In closing, let me just say that there are several moments in a country's history that chart its course indelibly for the future. For Asian Americans, that moment is now. 
What happens right now and over the course of the coming months will send a message for generations to come as to whether we matter, whether the country we call home chooses to erase us or include us, dismiss us or respect us, invisibilize us or see us. Because you may consider us statistically insignificant now, but one more fact that has no alternative is that we are the fastest growing racial demographic in the country. We are 23 million strong. We are united and we are waking up. Thank you.